So those are the, um, what I would, this is the best practices, and this is, this is sort of the unfolding of uh, participatory action research, and it just sort of follows this process indefinitely. Um, as McIntyre said, there is no unified, uniform, identifiable methodological framework for participatory action research, and I'm not suggesting that this is a framework, but this is basically how it unfolds uh, uh, in a pedagogical sense. All right. So, what are some of the advantages of participatory action research? Okay, um, next are three three advantages of a participatory action research model. Um, and as I said, what I've wanted, to, what I've attempted to do throughout all of the the videos that I've done in this uh, series on um, an introduction to qualitative methods research is to basically pitch each of the the paradigms. Right? I want you to want to do narrative research. I want you to want to do phenomenological. I want you to want to do participatory action research. It's up to you. It's sort of like a menu, right? You, it's exactly like a menu, right? You go to a restaurant. Some people go to a restaurant and know exactly what they're going to order before they get to the restaurant, which is cool. But, you know, sometimes the whole fun of going out to eat is that you don't know what they might be serving. So you, you know what you're interested in. You know you like, you know, you want to do a qualitative methods um, dissertation or thesis project or research on your own. And you're not too sure about what model you should apply. Sit down and look at what, what's on the menu. Well, this looks pretty good, but, you know, I really want to do a little bit more of this. And this model doesn't have what I want to do. I really want to get into this, and you know, I'm very, very interested in the community, and da da da. So I think, and, that, and that's what you do. You 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 first identify what is it that you're craving, right? You don't go to a restaurant and eat steak if you don't want to eat steak. If you go to a restaurant and you want a salad, you're not going to eat steak, right? So you you that sounds like a Dr. Phil. <laughs> it sounds like a Dr. Phil uh, statement. I didn't mean to sound like a Dr. Phil statement, but you know what I'm saying, right? You you know what you want to do, um, and based on what you want to do, you identify. Um, the research model that best addresses your interests. The whole point of me doing this research is not to tell you what the research is in any sort of fact of the matter, right? This is how participatory action research unfolds. This is how phenomenological research. It's like, no, here's what's on the menu. Um, go through, watch the videos, see what's on the menu, and then, you know, watch them a couple times and you think to yourself, I really like number two. I'm going to take number two. I'll have number two. And then do your research on number two. So, I mean, all I'm really doing is shuffling up a menu. Uh, sort of a way to way of looking at it. So, three advantages to participatory action research. One, um, I'm not going to write this down. Participatory action research, this model, is conducive to social and community-based research. I obviously said that before, right? It's, and actually I'll just put, uh, good for good for community research, right? Uh, it's really good for community research. One, I, I, just jumped in my head and I sort of the type of academic about just speak the first thing that comes to my head. I was living in Tampa, um, going to school at um, uh, University of South Florida, shout out to USF. So I was in uh, USF and um, there's a place in USF that is sort of like in the ghetto. They call it uh, Suitcase City. And I remember maybe three or four years ago, I think she was a teacher at the time, um, a young white uh, lady was behind a car, she's driving really, really fast through a very, very impoverished community. Um, I guess cutting through to try and get to another main road. And I think she mowed down like three or four black children. And uh, the, the black kids died. Not only did she kill, like, and it was like three or four children that she killed, her, her car is dented from the impact on the kids. And then she goes to her house. And I think, if I remember the story right, like her parents helped wash try to cover up the car or something like that and they really, you know, like they hit her with a manslaughter charge or she ended up doing community service and you can imagine the community went insane. Like everybody just went crazy. Um, in participatory action research, um, what ended up happening, make a long story short, is that a bunch of local organizers got together and tried to defuse the, the, the tension because there were going to be riots, people were going to, people were, and in St. Pete, I think the year before, there was like a two day or three day riot in St. Pete. So there's a lot of racial tension in like South Tampa, uh, St. Pete area. Uh, and I've lived there for a while, so I know sort of the tension. So the community was about to explode. And I, I don't remember the name of the group, but um, some group got together and 
they recognize that if something wasn't done immediately to try and pacify the, the sort of justifiable rage of the community, all hell was going to break loose. And it was a very, very simple remedy, right? What's good for the community? For that particular community, I remember because I drove there before the accident and after the accident. Before the accident, it was just, it was just, a, just a regular road. After the accident, for the entire block, it was like, let's say the block was, let's say the block was half a mile. Every 40 feet, 50 feet was a, like a really huge speed bump. And they did speed bumps down the entire block, right? So there were speed bumps down the entire block because it's a, it's a community. I mean, you can imagine it's, there's, you can imagine the community. Just fill in the blanks with what you think the community look like and it looks something like that. Um, and what ended up happening is you can't drive fast down that road anymore. Um, it's a very, very simple solution, apparently simple solution, to a very, very complex problem, right? That problem could have exploded into ridiculous levels of violence, caused millions of dollars worth of uh, damage. It could, it could have caused that. And it was something as simple as installing speed bumps down the length of the road to pacify the community. And of course the community mourned, and I don't remember what ended up happening to the, the woman who killed the kids. But um, at least now, future kids would be protected, right? That's, you know, if that's the type of stuff that you're interested in doing, then participatory action research is, is what's for you, right? You want to do it for the best of the community. This is a quote, um, actually from uh, Wadsworth, uh, 1998. The quote is, um, quote, A research approach that is a theory of possibility rather than a theory of predictability. And I just think that's, that's such a nice way to put it, right? When you're talking about participatory action, and to be honest with you, the next research that I'm going to do is participatory action research. I'm very interested. I've done a lot of phenomenology. I'm going to start dabbling in participatory action research because I am interested in sort of community relations. So me personally, I might have a bias in my lecture. I am a bit biased towards participatory action research. But, um, quote, uh, and again, this is from Wadsworth, quote, a research, participatory action research is, quote, a research approach that is a theory of possibility, a theory of possibility, rather than a theory of predictability. And basically what we're saying is that what is possible in this community um, may result as a consequence of you fill in the blank, dot, dot, dot. Right? In the community, it is possible that we might be able to mitigate violence by addressing the needs of the community and building speed bumps. Right? I believe that this could happen. Um, let's see what's happened. I go into community. I grieve with the community. I'm sorry for the loss. What do you think we can do? Let's have a brainstorming session. Everybody says stuff. Blah, 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 blah. We find something that we as a collective body can agree on. We implement our outcomes. We check the outcomes. We assess the outcomes and we move on, right? And we do the process until we arrive at what we want or we recognize that this is just a bigger, this is a bigger problem than we thought, right? So I really like the idea, Wadsworth's well, idea that it's more of a theory of possibility than a theory of predictability. Um, and the important thing to recognize is that you can do very, very, very rigorous very dense qualitative research. It can be just as dense as any quantitative research. Um, and you have that flexibility, that creativity that you can use, that possibility that you can use, that your own spin on it, your own take, your own interpretation. And you use that in sort of um, allegiance with the community of participants. And collectively, you guys create, literally, uh, a possibility to help the community itself, right? They're really, for me, um, there really isn't any better good that you can do, right? I think it's 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 a phenomenal uh, qualitative model for sort of community development, community betterment, you know, peace studies, all that stuff. Um, secondly, um, highly context specific community research. Uh, McIntyre talks McIntyre talks about this a lot, right? Very, 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 very highly context specific. Why is it context specific? Here, so. SP, if I could spell today, E C I F I C. It's highly context specific. The research community that you're interested in, whatever this research community, right, and this is the community, the community is going to be composed of many different, you know, communities are extremely complex structures, right? First of all, they exist conceptually. I mean, to say that the community is defined by the fact that there's just houses on the block is a, a bit ridiculous, right? Because you take the people out and it's not a community. And to say that it's just the people and not the houses is a bit ridiculous. It's sort of the people, the houses, the urban environment. It's a lot, right? The community, just defining what a community is, is in itself a problematique, right? It's, it's, it's something that, that can be sort of difficult to, um, to identify. But 
what you do is you, as a researcher, select one particular facet of the community um, that might interest you. That's a problem that you've heard exists in this community, and you want to go basically find out from members of the community, I, hey, am I right in my understanding that you guys are going through this? That's sort of the approach. It's like, am I, am I right in understanding that this is the problem? Say, no, it's really not that. It's more like this, or it's exactly like that, but let me just let you know how many other things are going wrong, blah, 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 right? 